Endorsed by former pro tennis player, now pickleball pro Jack Sock, the Selkirk Lux Control Air Invicta is a culmination of years of R&D, featuring an average weight of eight ounces with a thick set honeycomb core and a fluorite carbon fiber hitting surface. This paddle is loaded with technology. With a massive 20 millimeter thickness, this paddle is sure to satisfy the player looking for the ultimate control. So I wanted to start off by comparing this with the 003. Spec-wise, they're identical. The Lux has an updated Florac carbon fiber hitting surface. And in my opinion, the Lux has outshined the 003 in all aspects. What do you think? Yeah, I gotta agree with you, William. Uh, I thought it was just a more solid hitting experience, especially when I was deep in the court. This is a low-powered paddle, so you have to bring some speed with your swing. And I felt like I got a better response out of this one than that other one. Yes, like the 003, it's very control-oriented on serves and returns most notably. I really had to put a lot of power to get my shots deep. Uh, on singles where I'm relying on trying to get my depth in my shots and using a lot of power, uh, it was, I was just really struggling and focusing on that aspect. Doubles is where I wasn't having to cover so much of the court, so I could rely on my touch and dink shots and that's where I felt it shined. How do you think the spin was on this paddle? Spin was okay. I wouldn't say this uh, is an exceptionally spin friendly paddle, but uh, I felt like I got out what I put in. And so when I was deep in the court, using a lot of paddle speed, I was getting good spin on the ball. Up around the kitchen, um, I would say spin was just kind of like medium, uh, but I did really enjoy the touch. I think that was the highlight for me as well. A lot of feel on my dinks. I felt very, very dialed in. And in those quick exchanges, I actually found this paddle okay. It wasn't the quickest one to rotate, but uh, maneuverability was decent for me. How about you? Yeah, I noticed that, th I mean, this paddle is so thick. It's, you know, 20 millimeters. Getting the paddle from forehand to backhand uh, in volley exchanges was tough for me. It felt like it was just really kind of clunky to swing. I did like that there was a cutout in the surface. I feel like that contributed a little bit, but I just didn't think it was enough. Now anything with a compact stroke, I felt like this has a good weight to it. Touch, dink shots, I was getting everything uh, exactly where I wanted. I really enjoyed this at the kitchen line. Yeah, I also found it a good paddle when I was rolling over my volley, so if the ball was sitting a little bit and it was just hanging there and I had a time to you know, really go after it, that was when I felt like I could really get some good pop out of it up at the kitchen line and really put the ball away quickly. Again, spin came better in that type of situation, I think, just because I was swinging faster at the ball. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it before, the sweet spot is very generous. Um, hitting anywhere on this paddle was great for me. The vibration dampening's there, I mean, it's 20 millimeter paddle. Um, overall, though, I think that Anyone who has a really solid uh, power game is gonna find success with this paddle. For me though, I just didn't have the power that this paddle demands. For me, I think, again, this is a great paddle for someone who's looking for a ton of control to add to their game. I would definitely play this paddle with some uh, tape around the edge of it, uh, just to protect the edge. Durability is a concern with me with these um, edgeless paddles and um, with this one I did notice too that it was getting some chunks and taken out of it when I was contacting the court so I definitely put some tape on it just to protect it but uh, yeah if you're looking for a, a ton of control I think it's a great way to go. For more information on this Selkirk paddle or anything else pickleball related be sure to head to totalpickleball.com.